Is this me? Is only this you. Tom? Only you can answer that question. Oh, oh, I, oh I like that. Hey, listen, I've I've listened to you a few times on my way home. I see. And you, you, you I've never heard anybody give such bad advice to so many people. Well, what advice have I given this hour? Well, I was, you know, I actually listened the other the other day. So you're not listening right now. What's that? So you're not listening right now. Well, well I did. I just heard it. Oh, what are, what are we? What are we? What are we? What are we? What are we talking about? What's that? What are we talking oh. about? Oh, I, I, where you're just talking about women with MBAs. Yeah. Not, okay. And so, what uh, does this have to do with advice that I give out? Have I given advice out this hour? Oh, I, I don't know. Don't you always? So give out you advice? have? No, I don't. You don't. So let's review. You decided. I I I had a topic. I had an agenda. I, I put it forward. You heard the agenda. And you decided that you were going to change the topic of the show. Just You decided that you were going to take it in a different direction than I had taken it. Is that right? Well, actually, I just heard a number and it said call in. And yeah, but I, I did not say. Out. I said I, I asked a specific question and gave out the number. You Did you miss that? Well, I, I guess that when I got in my car, I must have missed it. I was just calling to talk You were about just calling with your own agenda that had nothing to do with my agenda. Is that right? Go ahead and throw it out. I'll, I've got it now. No, no, no. You already heard You already heard what the topic is. What comment do you have about the topic we're talking about? Uh, I don't. I just... You know, I just... I don't need, like I don't need a critique of the show. I don't need your opinion about what I do. Uh, we do a but, show but, like but that you, from you, time you, to time. Isn't it, isn't uh, no, I don't want to hear... I don't really care what you... If you want to talk about what you think about me, there, we, we set aside hours for that purpose, and when that's the topic, that's when you call about that. But that's not what we're talking about now. And you yourself told us that you know what we're talking about. So what you're saying is... You don't care if the other 4 million people listening to the show are following the agenda, listening to the topic, responding accordingly. You decided unilaterally to attempt to change the topic of the show by calling in and talking about something that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Is that right, Grandpa? Oh, I guess so. Boy. I guess so, you idiot. My question to you is, throughout your many years of travels have you ever met a man of god how do you define that you mean someone who believes well first of all a man of god will never reveal himself to any human being upon this earth not through religion not through teachings not through studying and not through outward adornment he will only reveal himself to you if god allowed him to that is the question I'm asking you. Have you ever been encountered? I, I don't believe in God, so I don't believe I've been a man of God. Well, that's fair enough, and I understand that, because 99.99% .99 of the people on this earth have not. And you're not alone. I just would like to make that clear. Um, that, uh, I think that, if there's no God, it's impossible to be a man of God by, by definition. Well, in, in all actuality, that's true, because... You know, even according to the Word of God, only one man makes it through per generation. And at those... Really? So who was, the, who was the last one? The last one was Noah. Well, I was more than a generation ago. Well, that's the last one. That was the only remaining survivor. You said one generation per generation. I just want to get this straight. You said one per generation. That's about every 20 years. Our generations are not the same as men's generations upon this earth. They are not as a 10-year generation or as a 100-year generation. They are on the years of thousands. Mm -hmm. And that is the generation of Christ. Right, so who was before Noah? Pardon me? Who was before Noah? Um, the one that would be before Noah would be Abraham. Well, that wasn't thousands of years. Well, like I said, you know, the scriptures and the, the tablets that men have to prove by themselves are not actual. They are only letters that have been ciphered through the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. Oh, and I do. Before, before right. we're running out of that's time, who's the next man of God? Um, I am the only one on this earth that is alive today. Speaks for itself. From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom. Like it. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likes Show. 
This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write out our telephone number. You're going to need it. E- it's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 8 Six, six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Look at this story about television from the Washington Post. That's a newspaper, isn't it? I imagine it also has a website. You didn't see the actual paper, did you, Gary? No. Is anybody reading newspapers anymore? Anybody? I mean, is there anybody reading newspapers? Yes, there is. I can't believe you, Tom. You're so well informed. I can't believe you. You you say all these bad things about newspapers. I read a paper every day. Every day. The Washington Post is an institution. You shouldn't be saying things about the Washington Post. (laughs) Anyway, that's from the Washington Post. After a botched season of singing gamblers, vampire detectives, and kid nations, said CBS from number one to number two among viewers for the first time in six seasons. The network is heading back to safer ground, adding two procedural crime dramas. What is a procedural crime drama? Does that mean like CSI or Cold Case or Without a Trace or CSI Miami or CSI New York? Is it... And two male-centric comedies to its fall primetime slate. Three of CBS's five new series are revamps of overseas shows, part of a growing trend by networks to go with shows that have succeeded in other markets, and for which, in most cases, there is already a multi-season template. Also, according to this columnist from the Washington Post named Lisa DeMarais, Or is that Dame Ray's? Dame Ray? I don't know. Yeah, she says strong women are in this year. (laughs) Really? Yes. CBS pro airing chief Nina Tassler. That's what she said to reporters and TV critics on Wednesday. At CBS's traditional convivial upfront day morning meeting schmooze at BlackRock. Hosted by CBS CEO Les Moonves, who is still the best press wrangler the TV biz has seen since the late Brandon Tartikoff way back in the glory days of NBC. Tassler said, and by the way, I've said this to you before, but now you're getting it from the programmer of a television network. I've said this to you before. Nina Tassler. Women drive network television. Women watch our procedurals and comedies, and we wanted to build on that, and we've added more female faces uh, to the network. During development season, she noted, CBS execs. As TV writers, if some of the male characters they'd written in new series could be rewritten as women. (laughs) Jesus. What have I told you? 
Next year, there'll be an article in Variety, and it will say Variety or The Hollywood Reporter or some other trade paper, Advertising Age, Ad Week. There'll be articles saying, Another decline in men 18 to 34. Where have they all gone? (laughs) Why don't they watch network television? We can't figure out where they've gone. Yeah. That article comes out every year, and then, of course, now you see why. The uh, piece continues, all of which thought, all of which we thought meant CBS would try to emulate the success the basic cable networks have enjoyed of late, with dramas built around strong, deeply flawed female characters, and mostly over-the-hill female actresses, I might add. Glenn Close in Damages, Kira Sedgwick in The Closer. Holly Hunter in Saving Grace, blah, blah, blah. By the way, how how outrageous is this? How many of you have watched the NBA playoffs on ABC? <laughs> and then it's like, hi, in the, like as they go to the commercials, hi, this is Brooke Shields from Lipstick Jungle, and you're watching the NBA playoffs. Like, how many people watching the NBA playoffs are actually going to watch Lipstick Jungle? Or Desperate Housewives? Just because somebody likes watching Tony Parker doesn't mean they like watching Eva Longoria, okay? But, you know, it becomes really apparent that every show on ABC is a vagina fest. I mean, ABC is the vagina network. (laughs) Yes. ABC, you know what that stands for? It's not always be closing. It's always be something else. When they do Pro Bowl saying, see you next Tuesday, you pretty much know where they're coming from. (laughs) This is ABC. (laughs) Oh, baby. Says here, until we have combed through the new CBS lineup and realized the only new series starring a woman is a one-hour show about a chick... Frantically looking for a husband among all her male dates and lovers, present and past. After being told by a fortune teller she had to get married in a year or she would never marry the horror and that she's already dated her future husband. It's called the X list. Now, to be honest, not only is that a chick show, but think about that concept for a second. What kind of a slut are we dealing with here as the main character? I mean, think about it. Either she's a real slut or the, what's the series going to run? Ten episodes? Twelve episodes? How many exes is she going to have to go through to find the guy that the fortune teller said would be her husband? I was thinking about this the other day. What if the show runs ten years? What if it's so popular it just keeps going? You know how network television is. We're not like Israel or or England or, or Columbia. We don't have shows that run six episodes or 12 episodes. We milk it till it's dry. So here's the plot of the show. A woman goes to a fortune teller, and she's told by the fortune teller that you've already met your future husband. And so the plot is every week she goes back and visits another one of her exes to figure out if he's the one. What if the show lasts 10 years? She will have gone back and visited 220 different guys. How many guys boned her? (laughs) Of course, if it's a lousy concept, she may only visit two or three ex-boyfriends before she figures it out. Yes, the show follows Ghost Whisperer, in which Jennifer Love Hewitt sees dead people. You know any guys who watch Ghost Whisperer? The new show stars Elizabeth Reeser, the chick who lost her face but gained a doctor lover on Grey's Anatomy. All these shows are for chicks. I don't I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know what any of these plots are. I don't even know the names of all these shows, frankly. I'm being honest. Jeez. The unit is adding a female character. Now, with a title like that, why would you need any females on it at all? (laughs) 
This according to, this is Nina Tassler, the programmer of the CBS Television Network. Plus, the women are moving off the base. Again, the unit. Have you seen that show, guys? No. Yeah, I I don't know. Is it me? (laughs) Is it just me? I mean, I find myself, honestly, looking more and more at the Internet and less and less at TV. And when I watch TV, I almost never watch shows when they're on unless they're sports. You know, I watch the shows, it could be up to a month later. I, I don't watch them when they're on. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, and as you know, the company I work for happens to own a television network, and I'm sure they wouldn't want me coming on here and telling you, start watching YouTube and stop watching CBS. So I won't say that. And frankly, I don't care what you do. All I'm telling you is what I do. And what I do is uh, the cat in the washing machine is generally on every night at my house. Where some of those Bill O'Reilly videos that you can find on our MySpace page, uh, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. By the way, we have a new Bill O'Reilly video today on our website there. You've got to check it out. on uh, It's on our MySpace page, actually. Uh, it's uh, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. That's the TV I'm watching. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F*** it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. <laughs> no one's asked me taking out Bill O'Reilly's style yet. Yeah, we can. We keep waiting. I, I mean, we thought for sure people would jump on that. But if you go to our MySpace, you will see uh, you will see the newest Bill O'Reilly video, which is based on the one you've seen already. And uh, this one is a uh, it well they're calling it a, like a dance remix. <laughs> You've got to see it. Uh, just go to uh, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. Now, we talked about newspapers not long ago. And again, you know, here we are now. Uh, newspapers, television. I mean, uh, CBS today bought uh, CNET for $2 billion. By the way, CNET, now there's a website I look at. And a website with a lot of content for guys. I'm very excited about that. If we have any synergy at all with that, we'll be very excited over here. Because uh, I use CNET every time I buy a computer or a printer or uh, I buy a plasma screen. They get all these reviews on there. It's fantastic. And I've been using it for years. So I'm thrilled about this. But the shows about ghost whisperers and chicks looking, uh, going, to, going to meet fortune tellers, and then going for their ex-boyfriends, I don't know. Why don't guys watch network TV anymore? <laughs> Why have guys stopped watching? And they do try to infiltrate the sports programming as well. You watch in the NBA playoffs, they have to have chicks there on the sidelines. They have to have uh, chicks in the promos for Lipstick Jungle. Uh, same thing with football on TV. Chicks on the sidelines, many of whom don't know anything about football, but you got to put chicks in it. They have to be chicks in there somewhere. You can't just have guys. You know, the guys would not be the least bit troubled if it was just guys who knew about football or knew about basketball. Uh, the network insists they've got to have women on there. Can any of these men be rewritten as women? That, that's essentially what they do on sports and everything else. You know, I mean, if, if you have a Girls Gone Wild channel, I think guys would watch that. But uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's the latest now. There's going to be even more female faces on CBS next fall. And uh, it just goes on and on and on. The story, I could, I could sit and read this story to you uh, all day, but, uh, you know, come on. Is it any wonder, think about it now, is it any wonder that young men have found other things to do other than watch network TV? I mean, I feel gay just reading the descriptions of what's on network TV, and, and the worst offender is ABC. ABC. Is there any show for guys on ABC besides the NBA playoffs? I mean anything. They don't even have Monday Night Football anymore. They, it's, it's nothing but chick shows. Desperate Housewives and Brothers and Sisters and lip, Lipstick Jungle and other lesser-known shows I can't even name. I Even Lost is largely a chick show, let's face it. What are the other shows on ABC? Anybody know? No. 
But is it any wonder the young men don't watch TV anymore? Or, or, or maybe I'm wrong. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Better to have chicks who live a little bit of distance from you, don't have time to see you. She's got three more years to finish her PhD. So. Then you seem, by the way, you seem so accommodating. Honey, you've got that PhD to study for. You take all the time you need working on, man. I understand. And when you get all that free time, you bang on the chicks. That's what you do. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Stephanie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Excellent. Um, my question is, well, actually, it's not a question. Um, it's a statement. Um, it seems a little bit hypocritical for you to complain about um, the, the shows being catering towards women when the women are the ones that are buying everything. Um, well, that's, that's not even true, and we know that because we have a thriving business here that appeals to men. Right. Uh, with blue chip advertisers. Also, well, I've, it, wait, wait, things. wait, wait, we're not done. Sorry. Uh, if, uh, if, if women were the only ones who buy things, why is there so much sports on TV? I don't think they're the only ones that are buying things. But uh, if women are buying everything, why are there so much sports on TV? I don't have an answer for that. I mean, why? is there any sport that's not on TV? Women's sports? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, right. uh, you know, why are there so many sports on TV? Uh, the answer is uh, because television uh, uh, thinks the only thing men are interested in is sports. Hmm. Well, I, they obviously believe that they have some sort of an audience of, of women that are needing to buy things for their household or whatever it is that they're selling. Well, I know what they think, but um, they're all going after women, and I think that's crazy. Well, don't they do? I would think that they would do studies in order to prove that they're making money and not just throwing Well, if the yeah, I, 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 you know, I hate to bite the hand that feeds me. No, I love doing it. Um, <laughs> if they knew so much about that, if their research was so good, why does network TV, all the networks, why do they lose viewers every year? Very good question. I mean, uh, if, if television, television, if television had record high audiences, I would believe you. But right. it doesn't. It has the lowest audience it's ever had. But look at the quality of television. I don't think it has to do with, well, maybe it does have to do with who it's catering to. But, you know, if you turn on some of these shows, they're, you know, they're ridiculous and they're not very good quality. Well, I don't know whether they're good quality or not. I'm a guy and I have very little interest in watching a show like Lipstick Jungle. What would you like to see? I'd like to see shows that have some relevance to guys. I mean, could you give me an example of like a show that you would watch? Like a show well, uh, I I do watch Two and a Half Men, which is one of the few shows on TV that a man might enjoy looking at. Right. That isn't about sports. Uh, it's an edgy show. It frequently has it goes way beyond the double entendre. This show uh, is pretty explicit in my view, and I like it. Well, I sounds like I would like it. I wish that they would expand their. The, you know the, the different types of shows that they're doing on TV because right now they're all pretty they're kind of boring yeah I also like this show Big Bang Theory I've been watching which is produced by the same producer of uh, Two and a Half Men another very funny show and largely I think it would be of interest to guys what about The Wire The Wire is not on network TV it's on oh, cable yeah. Oh, I watch we're, it on Netflix. Yeah, we're talking. Well, yeah, we're talking about cable. Right? I'm, I'm talking about uh, network TV right now. And uh, network TV, uh, each network is trying to get more vaginas tuned in than the others. That's. <laughs> it's all about getting the maximum number of vaginas watching their network. I mean, come on, American Idol. What straight man? Seriously, any straight men out there who watch American Idol? Probably not. I just find it hard to believe that they wouldn't know. They wouldn't have statistics on who's spending. Besides who's the disc watching. jockeys whose program director puts a gun to their head and says, you got to know what the audience pays attention to. They're watching American Idol. you got to watch it. you got to talk about it. <laughs> if you don't know who David Archuleta is, you're fired. I don't know. I feel like their businesses have to be run a little more tightly than that. Uh, trust me when I tell you, okay? <laughs> I've been in this business my whole life, and that's only a slight exaggeration of the way it works. Wow. Well, that's all I had to say. I don't really know. I'm not in that business, and I'm not in your business, so I don't know. But 
That was the only well, thing. Well, the numbers, the numbers have said, and there have been articles. If you go back to the archives of the trade magazines in, in the entertainment business, there has to be at least one article like this every year, and there was one a couple of years ago the New York Times as well, specifically talking about the decline in men 18 to 34 watching television. Yeah, and the networks, and the networks are clueless. They're like, we can't figure out where those men. They just simply disappeared. It's like they've checked out, and they start blaming the, they start blaming the ratings, and they start blaming the rating company, and they start blaming the methodology used to to measure the audience. But anybody who talks to men eighteen to thirty four knows where they've gone. Uh, they've gone to the internet. They they they're on uh, Facebook, MySpace, YouTube. Uh, they're watching uh, videos all over the place. That dig dot com. That's where they are. Well, I'm right there with him. I have to agree. Even you, you watch The Wire. You get your network TV from, uh, uh, well, it's, it's a cable network, and you get that from Netflix after it's already been on TV. There's, our, there's oh, almost... Oh, it's on uh, HBO, isn't it, The Wire? I think so. I think so. I, there's almost nothing on network television that's worth watching, in my opinion. Well, everybody says that, but then when you dig a little deeper, everybody watches something. There's a couple. I mean, I, I look, I just named a couple of shows I watch. I watch The Office, which I enjoy very much. Um, 30 Rock. I think 30 Rock is a good show and well done. Um, although produced by a chick, it is it is a funny show. A uh, funny chick? Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, I if only for work purposes, I watch uh, Jay Leno and David Letterman to some extent every night. So that's a lot of TV right there. Okay. But, uh, you know, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you I don't watch TV. I've got seven DVRs at home. Believe me, I watch TV. <laughs> I do. But less and less am I watching, for example, ABC. Uh, unless the NBA is on ABC, I don't watch ABC at all. At all. At all. Not well, even I, once a week. Almost every show on ABC is geared towards women. Uh, except the, the whole, Boston. And even lost, like you say, starting to sort of slide over there. Yeah, it, it, it's one chick show after another. And it's like uh, there's no reason for guys to tune into ABC except uh, when the NBA is on. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I just think the overall quality, like I said, of television in general has really dropped. And uh, what was common in de denominator is watching the lowest quality of the shows and I don't know. Hopefully, if that changes, maybe the whole thing will change. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks. Appreciate the call. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. Uh, we're talking about network TV. Are young guys watching it? I mean, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. Are young guys watching it? I don't think so. Tom, 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 like this. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Back in high school, you've been out with a girlfriend. First day I heard you, dump the bitch the next day. I love that. It's the Tom Likas Show. From inside the belly of the beast, Hollywood, California, it's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I think the, uh, the new Bill O'Reilly video we have on our MySpace is funnier than anything on TV tonight. Well, it's five left of the office. We haven't seen that yet. That might be even funnier. I don't know. But uh, this Bill O'Reilly video is pretty funny. And you can see it by going to MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. That's MySpace.com slash T-O-M. L E Y K I S MySpace dot com slash Tom Likas. Go take a look and see the Bill O'Reilly video. It's great stuff. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Tony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Thanks for taking my call, Tom. Tom, I'm just wondering why would you make a dumb statement like why would any straight or straight man uh, be watching America? Well, yes, I would like to know the answer to that. Are you going to yeah. tell me? Well, why? Why would you make a statement, then? Because I can't imagine it having any appeal for straight males. Really? Just just like that? That's just it. like that. Okay, that's all I want to know. Well, you haven't answered my question, Tony. Why don't you enlighten us as to how a straight man like yourself 
likes to watch a show that is essentially produced for screaming, giggling teenage girls. Tell us what you find interesting about it. Just the music itself. The interesting. The thing music like itself. That. You mean you mean when they go on and they 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 do warmed over cover versions of Barry Manilow songs? You're telling me that uh, that that is appealing to you? Why not? I mean, that, that sounds good. It's cool. Uh, can't you see that at your local karaoke bar or, uh, you know, any uh, any lounge at a Holiday Inn where they have lounges or any Hyatt? Yeah, that's true, too. So yeah, tell yeah. me, does they really, uh, what is your interest in seeing this on television? I don't get it. There's some hot chicks on there sometimes singing. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, they, there's some fat chicks on there singing. Uh, who are the hot chicks? The chick, I don't know by name or anything like that. I just watched the program, Tom. That's it. Well, a lot of fat chicks, and most of the chicks who make it uh, to the last rounds appear to be uh, enormous. True, enormous. Yeah, so uh, really, hot chicks? Well. Maybe you ought to check out your own latent homosexuality. 1-800-5800-TIME. He sure taught me a lesson. You're right, Dean. He showed me. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking my call, man. I listen to you a lot. I love it when you eat people up like you just did. It's comedy. Why, thank you. All right. Well, I'm calling just because of the same thing, the American Idol, man. Was this Super Bowl, the whole four hours before the Super Bowl, should have been the prequel to the Super Bowl. Should have been all the highlights and everything that got the two teams there. And what was it? It was a red carpet full of American Idol. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, yikes. It was horrible. Now, I can understand if you're a gay male and you exactly. uh, you like seeing fat women uh, dressing up uh, on television. Uh, I can understand you might have an interest in this. Right. Or when they sing, uh, you know, uh, George Michael tunes or whatever. I can understand that. Right. Uh, teenage girls, I understand the appeal of it. But why would a straight male want to watch that show? I wait all year for football season to come around. I wait all season for the biggest game of the year to come around. I get, I throw a Super Bowl party every year for my buddies, and my family, and friends, and we got to watch American Idol for four hours while I'm barbecuing. It was disgusting. Yikes. It was rough, Tom. Hate it. Yep. Well, thanks for taking my call, man. You tell all them people out there, and you tell everybody how it is, and it is just out of hand. It is out of hand what they do with sports these days. All the right, you were right through the whole NBA playoffs so far. You got women walking in through the middle of the game saying, "You're watching the NBA playoffs. Don't forget to watch the closer." Right. Well, yeah, on TNT, same thing. That's right. 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 Yeah. I mean, uh, come on. At least TNT has some shows for guys. Okay, but ABC. We don't need to see Brooke Shields and Eva Longoria during the game. Sorry. Mm. And then I, I, I can't remember who it was that was doing commentary on this past Super Bowl, and they just ate Ryan Seacrest up, which was comedy because there was no reason he should have been anywhere near football. They even told him, I think the joke was, they said, Ryan, you know, the, we didn't think we'd ever see you at a uh, Super Bowl unless you were in a cheerleader outfit, <laughs> which was comedy. And then finally when they got to football, um, I forget who made the comment, and they just went, and finally football after all of that. After four hours of Paul Abdul and that other guy on the show, they, they did a they did a whole uh, they sang a song and did a whole thing, but it was pre-recorded. They couldn't even do it live. Right. They couldn't even do it live. And then they said, "Finally, football." After all that, great game, but right. Well, you won't see that this year because the Super Bowl's on NBC this year. Good. Yeah. Good. Get to listen to Al Michaels and, and John Madden talk serious football. That's right. Instead of everybody else talking about who won American Idol and, and, and <laughs> when their next album drops. <laughs> so does the next baby drops, probably. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. I won't take no more of your time, Tom. Will you blow me up? I'll blow you up, baby. 
one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mike of the Tom Likas Show. Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Good, good. Glad to hear. You know, I wanted to tell you, I'm pretty sure you've noticed, but uh, even watching the news on the network channels has become like watching TMZ or any of those entertainment tabloid shows. That's absolutely true. We've talked about that in the past, too. Uh, they can't get chicks to watch the news because we all know chicks don't care about the real news, like what's going on in the government or the war or stuff like that. Uh, so more and more, the news, the, you know, it looks like the news and it has an anchor desk and, and it, says, it says news on it. Uh, but all in all, what you're watching is uh, the latest weight loss technique. And you know, a lot of TV journalists nowadays are starting to agree. Um, one of them I found out was John Beard, the guy who used to anchor the Fox 11 News at 10. Yeah. Um, if you go to his website, he'll tell you why he's not on Fox 11 News anymore. And what he says on there is that he brought up the whole thing complaining that the news is turning too entertainment-oriented. Well, yeah, well, and John Beard never, ever said any of that in all the years he was being paid by Channel 11. Uh, that's kind of specious. Uh, you know, if John Beard had something like that to say, he should have said it when he was anchoring the news on Channel 11. Yeah, I think so. Too. I think the main reason, reason John Beard is not on Channel 11 anymore is because Channel 11 had a chance to hire Carlos Amesco away from KTLA uh, right as uh, when Hal Fishman died. And they were about to offer Carlos Amesqua apparently the uh, anchor chair on Channel Five, and so they hired him away. That's it. Uh, but but John is, Beard, no matter, no. John Beard beat Hal Fishman in the news here in L.A. for years. Yeah, I think John Beard had been this since like the early nineties or so. Right. But th today, these but for John matter. Beard now, with all his free time, sitting home uh, writing his blog or whatever he's doing, to sit home and and make that comment, John had no problem with it all the years he was being paid. You know, you could have a point there. The thing is, though, it doesn't matter who's anchoring the news these days. It's really like watching TMZ. Well, it is. It's a, it's all like TMZ. It's like TMZ or Entertainment Tonight. It, it's a, the news looks like that now. It absolutely does. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Brent on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hi, son. How are you? Great. Excellent. I couldn't agree with you more. I think ABS, I mean, ABC should now be PMS. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> I'll tell you where I went, and most of my friends my age went, is we went to video games. It's got sports and blowing stuff up. What else do you want? Yeah, absolutely. Grand Theft Auto is the number one TV show among uh, young guys. <laughs> That's it. I'm telling you, what, it's terrible. You can't even watch sports anymore. You got to go online now because they're just you just get bombarded with that stuff. Yeah, I know. Always got to get the chicks in. By the way, you can see the difference when you watch network coverage of games and local coverage of games. Um, I have, uh, you know, the direct TV baseball package, football package, hockey package, basketball package. And, uh, when you watch local broadcasts of games, they rarely have chicks in the actual game coverage. It's rare. Yeah. But the minute it goes to network oriented. TV, it's like, well, we can't preempt all the vagina programming without having a vagina <laughs> on during the hours that it's going to be preempted. We got to get some vagina in there. Yep. Because otherwise, that'll be, th what, three whole hours without a woman on TV? We can't have that. Nope, because then the girls might run away. <laughs> but if you watch uh, sports on uh, the various Fox Sports Net channels around the country, they very rarely a chick in the actual game itself. I agree. Well, thank you for taking my call. Can you take me out with the helicopter crash? Oh, that is tasteless. This may be the end of this thing. Well, he's taking okay, off he's running. Okay, uh, now it's a foot chase. Okay, now he's jumping to another, another vehicle. vehicle. Okay, okay. All right, they're Doors closing open, in. Please. Looks okay. like they've... Oh, we're we're going to pull out. We don't, we, don't, uh, we don't know what has just happened right there. Uh, ouch. That hurts. All right, our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Send us an email. Love to hear from you. Visit our website here, our show streaming live. It's blowmeuptom.com for that. And don't forget the Bill O'Reilly Fiesta on the MySpace page, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. The Tom Likas Show.